This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Let's commit the uncommitable. What's up guys? Salut, this is Alex. Today, the plan is very simple. I want to make the ultimate beef bourguignon burger. So in case you don't know, beef bourguignon is basically beef braised for hours and hours in a red wine sauce with carrots, onions and mushrooms. And I want to adapt this classic French dish into a beautiful burger. Now, if you know the channel really well, this is something I've attempted eight years ago already. So in the old version, there were a couple of things that I would never do the same way today. I mean, I have evolved, I have learned new skills, and my taste has simply changed over time. So the recipe was cool, but here are the few things I did wrong. First, for the bread, I use some sort of a baguette bun. I love the idea, but it's not gonna be a pleasant experience to bite into this. Taste is gonna be okay, but texture, nah. Now for the meat, I use beef chick that I cooked for hours and hours in order to make it very, very tender. Then I took a slab and I cut the edges to make you believe that this is a beef patty. The problem? Well, it's not a beef patty. Is it good? Yes. Does it taste like a burger? No. A burger needs a proper beef patty. And finally, the sauce. So in my defense, this old me hasn't done the mother sauce series yet. But the problem is that the new me has. <laughs> so just by looking at it, I can tell you that this is no Michelin star beef bourguignon sauce. And I want one in my burger. Let me show you today how to make the ultimate beef bourguignon burger. By the way, if you want to get one of these beautiful looking aprons that I designed myself, you can because we've got a few back in stock. So get them before they're gone. Okay, so when it comes to beef bourguignon, the sauce is the key element. And in order to make a good beef bourguignon sauce, you can't just put wine on the meat and call it a day. No, you need some premium beef stock to make a good beef bourguignon sauce. Balance, that's what you need. So in order to make the best sauce, I need obviously to make stock myself. I'm gonna make beef stock from scratch, but I'm gonna speed up the process. One of the tricks is to use ground beef. So we also need a bit of vegetables, but not too much, because it's the beef flavor that I'm looking for. It's a common chef thing to leave the skin of the onion on in order to impart a bit more color to the broth. We go in with the aromatics. And now besides the ground beef that I added earlier on, uh, you need to add bones. Now I got these for free at my butcher. You can always ask for these because they tend to discard them. It's a shame. All of this goes in there. The final piece, a bit of tomato puree. Just gonna boost the umami and add a bit of redness to that darkness. I'm gonna pressure cook all this. Otherwise it would take eight hours. I only have two. This is the solution. Two hours later. Thank you. 
Okay, and now a quick word from our sponsor, Skillshare. So as a creator, I'm always willing to up my creative game, like whether it's with filming, lighting, or designing. I love to get my brain rolling on new projects and to learn new skills. I mean, you know me, right? And there is no better place than Skillshare to do so. It is the largest online learning community for creatives, with thousands of classes led by industry pros across film, illustration, design, freelance, productivity, and more. So this new year, invest in yourself and your goals by starting a learning journey on Skillshare to take your career, skills, or side hustle to the next level. If you're not sure where to start, Skillshare designed a learning path to help you get from novice to pro in no time. Learning paths are hand-picked classes meant to be taken in order that built on one another, reinforcing lessons. Uh, they are available in a range of experience level from beginner to advanced and a variety of categories, including obviously cooking and you see where this is going. My own class on Skillshare. Cooking like a chef, five fundamental skills for kitchen success. It happens to be one of the very first steps of the cooking for beginners learning path. Told you. The first 500 people to use my link in the description below will get one month free trial of Skillshare. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video. I can see there's a bit of fat, but also there's a ton of gelatin because the liquid seems to be thicker than just water. I don't know about you, but it always feels at first, at least, like a, like a waste to be discarding all this, but you can taste the meat. Tastes like nothing, tastes like fibers. Keep your mind at peace, you can discard all this. I'm usually pretty critical when it comes to stocks in general, but this one is just spot on. The color, it looks like caramel. It's velvety, it has some thickness to it. Let's talk about the wine. The method that I'm gonna be using is to do a wine reduction, okay? But instead of just going with wine, there's a little trick, a chef trick that I learned uh, as I was filming in one of my favorite restaurants when it comes to beef bourguignon here in Paris, Le Petit Célestin. And back then, the chef Jaïs told me that instead of doing a wine reduction... On fait quelque chose qui s'appelle dans la cuisine un miroir. Un miroir, ouais. En fait, tu mets un volume de Porto pour deux volumes et demi de vin rouge. D'accord. Et tu fais réduire jusqu'à ce que ce soit comme presque un caramel ou ouais, une... Tu vois, c'est vraiment Magnifique. siripeux. Ouais. Et t'incorpores ta sauce dedans et tu vas voir ce que ce que tu fais là. That's what we're going for. So it's two part wine, one part port wine. One, two, so that's for the wine. I'm gonna burn some of that wine. Mega, mega. It looks very dangerous. I don't know why I'm partying. I mean, look at this. Now you can see why this sauce is called a miroir. I can really see my reflection in there. Now is the time to assemble the sauce and for that I'm gonna add the wine reduction or miroir to my beef stock. I might end up using everything, but I'm gonna do it bit by bit. Let's see. Ah, now we're starting to get somewhere. Might require a bit more wine. And we are all in.
Wow, now it, now it tastes like beef bourguignon. Okay, so let's make some pickled veggies. Why am I using carrots? Well, carrots are a very important ingredient of beef bourguignon, so I thought making pickled carrot would make sense. In theory, I should let them rest in water and vinegar for a couple of days, but I'm gonna have to rely on this hot pickling technique just because I don't have the time for this. So I'm boiling vinegar and water in my kettle to speed up the process and also because I'm lacking one stove. <laughs> it may sound gross, okay, but at the same time I'm killing two birds with one stone. I'm doing the hot pickling, of course, but I'm also cleaning my kettle, so not so gross. No, Alex, that's not gross at all, is it? In fact, my favourite type of pickled carrots have big chunks of lime scale in them from my dirty kettle. Not gross at all. So right now, I'm gonna make a little onion jam. It's gonna bring a bit of sweetness, but some caramelized, naughty, sticky vibe to that burger. It's beef bourguignon, so it has to be a little naughty. So I was looking for four spices, just to give to that jam a little, a little more personality, basically. I don't want to overpower the beef flavor or the beef bourguignon, but still, jam is a jam, and I might use it for something else as well, so. So let's just deglaze this with a bit of white wine. Add a touch of sugar to kill the acidity, or to mellow the acidity. And now, I'm gonna let this simmer gently. So I'm gonna make a little lid for that pan. And now we just need to forget about this. Don't really forget it, just forget it for a moment. Right. Now we need to talk about bread. In this case, buns. Two solid options. The industrial version, but still a good one. This is amazing if you're doing a smash burger, for example. If you want a, a bit of that junk food vibe, sticky, caramelized, cheesy, sloppy, I would go for this. And then the artisan version. It comes from my favorite baker in Paris called Utopie. These guys know everything when it comes to bread and pastry, and apparently to buns as well, because this bun has won the French championship three times in a row. <laughs> it feels like a bun, but it smells like a baguette. I can't think of a better candidate for my burger. I'm almost tempted to just bite into it. I need to prepare the rest of the topping, so I'm gonna cut some fresh parsley and some very thin slices of raw mushrooms. I wanna have a very flat and very crispy bacon to add more texture to that burger. This is the finish line. Let's cook the beef patty and assemble everything.
wait to dig in. Can't wait to dig in, but I'm thinking there might be something outrageous to perform at the very last minute. So when it comes to beef bourguignon, this sauce is, in my eyes, the most important element. <laughs> A Michelin star beef bourguignon sauce. Something borderline forbidden. So something I have to do then. Let's commit the uncommitable. Now this, this is a beef bourguignon burger. <laughs> In all honesty, there's no polite way to eat this. Mm. I'm trying to come up with words, but I fail, okay? It's just too good. The beef patty is pretty juicy. It's not as dry as you sometimes get. And then obviously there's the sauce, which just makes it a beef bourguignon burger. Then I've got the, the kick from the old-fashioned mustard. Then I've got some freshness from all the pickles. Now eating this burger, I can feel that right now I did a much better job at respecting the code of the burger than I did a while back. This is a burger. The bread doesn't get in the way. The patty is a beef patty. It's not a piece of steak, it's not pulled beef. No, 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 it's a beef patty. And then I guess the beauty is that it all comes together in one bite, one thing. It's very wholesome, substantially wholesome. Man, that glistening of sauce on the side. Does it bring me back? Yes, it does bring me back to beef bourguignon with mommy, with grandma. That's one hell of a burger. I hope you enjoyed. Take care. We'll see us in the next one. Bye-bye. Salut.